Hey yo! Another crazy fucking video from the Angry Photographer. This video is going to be a gear review and it's going to be one of those Oh shit! Why didn't I think about that? That makes perfect sense! Oh shit! i be talking about uh, normal lenses. You know, what's the definition of normal? Um, 50mm rough equivalent for DX obviously is your 35mm. Over here we have our three varieties of uh, 50 millimeters for FX or uh, film cameras because they're both D's and that one's an older manual. And um, so the question is, is that, well first let's talk about, you know, a lot of people say, well I got a 50 millimeter, just collects desk, I use my zoom lens, you know, it does everything. And of course I just got done making a video about why you're a douchebag for packing a zoom lens around everywhere, but there's only three types of photographers, you need to remember that. There's consumers, you know, they use their cameras like machine guns. Pow, 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 pow. There's a picture of the kid. There's a picture of the dog. There's a picture of my naked wife. You know, uh, there's a picture of uh, my mistress. There's a picture of the hooker I banged last week. Pow, pow, pow. You know, there's no composition. There's nothing in there. They just want high resolution shots so they can, uh, you know, take it to work and go, Oh, God, look at that. Oh, yeah, that's a lovely picture of your ugly baby. You know, thanks for showing us that, Bob. That's your consumer photographer. Next level are your amateurs. Consumers are basically like photocopiers because that's all they are. Just whatever they see. Pow! 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 Usually they don't even crop the pictures. Like, when they get in there, boom! There's another picture. Boom! Oh, that's fucking sexy. Boom! I got only uh, photocopiers of the photography world. Your next level photographer is, of course, your amateurs. They're kind of like sketch artists or grandma that's taking a... Uh, you know, a class and art and oil paintings and they remind me of those old fuckers that watch those uh, Bob Ross shows. Remember that fuzzy headed dude with the afro and he was always making pictures of nature and he goes, we're gonna put a little fuzzy tree over here. He's a happy tree and right next to that we're gonna make a lovely little stream. Make our stream happy. Remember that guy Bob Ross? Those are the people that actually imitate that guy. You know, they're they're not masters of light or composition, you know, they're just doing the shit for fun. They'll they'll dabble in some shit and they'll buy a new lens and I'm gonna try that out for a while. They're kinda like uh pissing time away until someone throws them in the fucking coffin. Um not all amateurs are old, obviously. Um a lot of them are young, but I'm kinda making a generalization. I'm kinda saying that from living in Florida. Um, at my other house, you know, a lot of the photographers down there, they take that up. It's like, well, what am I going to do to piss away the rest of my time until I croak? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take up photography. I'm going to take a photography class. Uh, your next level, obviously, your professionals. These are people that are masters at manipulating light. Masters of composition. You know, they're skilled artists. You know, typically they make their bread and butter. You don't have to be making bread and butter as a photographer. If you have a true hard on for making good photography. It doesn't have to be a point of income. And some of these guys produce the best photographs. And typically they're rich assholes with a ton of gear and they travel the world and you know they'll study a scenery and they'll compose it and they make really awesome photographs. But you know they've got nothing better to do. You know they don't care about the money. They'll submit their photographs. They'll win a few awards. Anyway professionals are two varieties. You know the ones that are scratching for money, you know, and they gotta have the skills and they have to become masters of light and composition because otherwise they don't fucking get paid and you got the other professionals which are kinda like your douchebag, rich folk that, uh, well you know, I've got a shitload of gear and I'm gonna spend the next 10 years on vacation perfecting my photography skills and I'm gonna travel the world and I'm gonna do all this shit. Anyway, back to... <laughs> Back to the 50 millimeter, what I call the normal lenses. I hate normal lenses. My 50 millimeters collecting dust, and I never use that fucking thing. I've got an old DX camera, you know, it's D5300, and I got a new FX because you know an FX camera is an upgrade because it can do more shit, and you know it's got it's got a bazillion megapixels, and that means it's a better camera. Well, no, it doesn't. There's a whole myth of upgrading. I'm gonna get better shit when I buy this FX camera, you know. That's why everybody needs a D810 and I'm gonna eventually upgrade after I save my pennies. Anyway, let's take a look at the normal lenses. Let's take a look at this uh, no shit thing nobody ever thinks about. Here we have uh, three 50 millimeters. over here we have a 35 millimeter. So these are for FX and that's for uh, DX. Boy, 
boring. Well, it's not really boring. I mean, a lot of the best photographers in the world uh, take some of the most incredible shots with 50 millimeters or normal lenses. Um, a lot of people find them boring and they generally don't use them anymore because they're using super zooms or zooms and you know even a lot of pros are like that. They've got some nice primes like they've got 85s and they've got uh, 60 millimeter macros and 20 millimeters and they got a bunch of primes they work with but you know there's still a lot of pros that dick around with 50 millimeter. You do have to have a better skill set you can either produce one of two things with prime lenses. You can produce shit because you're a cheesy amateur, or you can produce some really wonderful shit. But you gotta have good skills. That doesn't mean you have to be a master to master the 50 millimeter, but it does mean you gotta squeeze really hard to get the toothpaste out of the end of the end of this depleted roll. And uh, that's why uh, there are only two people that are using 50s: newbie amateurs, which is good. You know, it's good to cut your teeth on 50 millimeter. But here's something that I don't know if anybody ever mentioned on YouTube before, and it's obviously an extremely intelligent choice, is you switch up your FX with your DX and your DX with your FX. Oh, what the fuck do you mean? That doesn't make any sense. Well, it will here in a second. 50 millimeter normal lens, and you do not want the 1.4, by the way. It's actually a softer lens. You're like, no, the 1.4 costs a lot more than the 1.8. Well, the 1.4 has a lot worse distortion and it's a lot fuzzier on close-up shots than the 1.8. So yes, this far cheaper 50mm 1.8 is actually a superior lens. Not my opinion, hardcore fact. This cheaper lens is superior to the 1.4. Well, that's more expensive. This has got to be better. Well, no, it's not. You know, this used is about 300 and this used I could buy these bitches all day long for $80. Yes, we'll get these. I've got actually six 50 millimeters. I don't know how I accumulated six 50 millimeters, but here's three of them. Um, use this on your DX camera. Why? Why would I use that on my DX? Well, because you basically have an equivalent uh, portrait lens. you got an 85, uh, well, it's not specifically 85, but uh, you basically got an 80 millimeter uh, portrait lens. Um, for your uh, DX camera. Wonderful. Uh, the 50mm is tack ash sharp. Uh, I use the 50mm a lot, but I generally do not use it on an FX camera because it is far more useful and more wonderful and lovely to use on a DX. So if you got a DX camera, 5300, D7100, whatever the hell you've got, grab a 50mm. You think, well, that's an FX lens or an old film camera lens. Uh, no, it'll work perfectly fine on your DX, and it's a lot more useful, relatively speaking. I mean, it's just useful on an FX, but it's more useful and more handy, has a broader spectrum of use. It's a, it is a beautiful fucking uh, portrait lens for your... If you want a cheap portrait lens, and you're on the cheap, and you're like, well, you know, I don't have the money for an 85 millimeter. Yeah, you know, that's kind of expensive. That's $500. You want an awesome portrait lens for your DX camera? Well, here it is. Spent 60, 80 bucks. Used perfect condition on eBay. Buy a 1.8, not a 1.4. Okay? 1.8, not 1.4. You see that? Yes, that is genuine lens porn for your uh, DX camera. Awesome, incredible, your balls will drop off and roll across the floor. This is a lens that you want. It's cheap as shit. It's built like a brick outhouse. It's finer than frog fur. It's made in Japan. It is the shit. It's a 50mm D autofocus Nikkor. Get it for your DX camera. It's like, you've only got a DX camera. It's like, why would I want a 50mm? Because it's fucking awesome. It is an awesome lens, and it's the perfect poor man's portrait lens. And forget about portrait; it's just a perfect lens to have for a DX camera. And they're cheap. I mean, Nikon made so many bazillion of these bitches. I mean, I'm surprised the river isn't floating with them. There's just so many out there, and they're just so damn cheap. And they're extremely well made. Here's an older 1.4 uh, manual. Uh, believe it or not, uh, like I said just the same problems with 1.4 autofocus. Incredible lens, it's not really that cheap. A lot of people think, well, you know, I need an, a 1.4 because that's wider than a 1.8. You don't. Um, this lens is wonderful. There's absolutely nothing special about it. It's an old 50mm 1.4 Nikkor. Um, 
if you want to practice on your manual skills, I don't know, I really can't recommend it. I mean, you can get one of these, the 50mm uh, uh, one eight to Nick Hors for 80 bucks off of eBay. So don't even think about either one of these. Just don't. FX or DX, just don't think about it. Like I said, the 1.4 is fuzzy on close-ups, and it's got more distortion issues all the way open. So if you're only using this because it's shitty at 1.4, if you're only using it at 1.8 or above, then why the fuck would you spend $200 more for this than you would for the 1.8? If you're always using this at 1.8 or above, then just get the fucking 1.8. Oh, that makes sense. Jesus, you know? Here we have the quintessential DX lens. Now it is made in China. It's a gelded lens. Um, but Nikon's made a bazillion of these and it is fucking awesome. For a Chinese lens it's just the cat's ass. I mean I think that's one of the few Chinese DX Nikkors that I can highly recommend. And why is this lens so awesome? Well, if you got an FX camera, this lens is for this is a 50 millimeter equivalent essentially for your for your DX camera. So why is this lens so awesome to have for your FX camera? Well, because it's a 35 millimeter. Throw an APS-C crop sensor mode on your FX, and you have a wonderful balls sharp, very useful wide angle for your FX camera. Awesome, great. And these are really cheap. I think there's, what, $220 new, and uh, eBay is just filthy with these. Because people use these. People have no fucking brains, for one. But they have these for their DX camera, and they go, I'm going to get a super zoom, and I don't need this shitty old 35mm. So the eBay is always filthy with the 35mm uh, DX uh, lenses. But the great thing is that this lens is the cat's ass has a nice wide angle in a DX crop sensor mode for your FX camera. It's very lightweight, it's extremely well made. Yes, the mounting ring is metal. See that back element? Yes, that's genuine lens porn right there. It's just a cat's ass. There's nobody that would disagree that this inexpensively made Chinese lens isn't just fucking awesome because it is. It's awesome. So there's the secret that you won't find on YouTube for saving money. What's the secret again? Get your 50 millimeters uh, for your uh, DX camera because they're awesome, they're tack sharp, they're wonderful, and they make the perfect portrait lens. Not the best perfect portrait lens, which would be the 60 millimeter macro, but they make perfect portrait lenses and they're just damn cheap. So get the 18D 50 millimeter for your DX. And for your FX, if you already have a DX camera, use this one. You know how much people pay for 35 millimeter FX? lenses for their FX camera? A lot! They're not cheap! Yes, you can use an FX mode, whereas this one you have to throw an APS-C crop sensor DX mode. So what? Are you planning on printing out 20 by 30 prints for shit's sake? Nobody will see any difference. I mean, unless you're planning on printing out posters, you do not need a 35mm FX. Is that my personal opinion? Yeah, but it's also generally true, so kiss my ass if you don't like what I just said. It's true. You know. If you don't like it, fine. It's advice to save you money. So you got your FX cameras you should use for your DX because they're awesome. And you have your DX lens which you use for your FX camera because it's awesome there. So by switching them up, you've taken boring to awesome. You've turned these boring normals into portrait lenses for your DX. And you've taken this boring normal of DX and made a perfect wide angle for your FX. That's saving money, baby.